Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you had an amazing week as usual. Now, this is a bike that you may not have seen before unless you've seen some commercial work that I recently did for What Three Words and DHL. Now, if you haven't seen the video, I'll link it down below. Essentially, the story is I'm a DHL delivery driver stuck in traffic. I see someone do some stunts on a bike and think that's a really good idea to go out and be a quicker way to deliver this parcel. And then it's just a case of me whizzing through Glasgow, doing some tricks on the way and delivering this box to its rightful owner. Now, the video is going down well, but a lot of people are rightly asking about the bike because it's a little bit weird, isn't it? So that's what this video is going to be. I'm going to do a bike check video, not a build video because I had to build this pretty quickly, didn't have time to film it, so I'm not going to debuild it, build it again because the video's already out, it's already been a bit spoiled. So this is a bike check video and I'm going to run you through a few things that make this bike unique. So let's start with the main thing, the frame. What frame is this? Now, the whole premise of the video was it's meant to be a city bike, one of the bikes you hire and yeah, they wanted me to ride an actual city hire bike. And I kind of told them that, yes, I could ride one, but it's going to be so heavy and potentially even weak that I wouldn't actually be able to do that much on it. The alternative was just to get a normal commuter bike and try and do stunts on that, but they're not really known for their strength, are they? So I suggested, why don't we get something that's going to be a little stronger, a little bit more suitable for smashing off walls, doing some flips and modify something that is going to be strong enough. So that's an idea Cut Media were keen on. Watch the Word provided a budget and I set out on eBay to find something that is going to be suitable. And this is what I came up with. This is actually an original DMR Trail Star, which may be a bit sacrilegious to go and modify one, cut one up, but it actually would be perfect for what I wanted. Firstly, it fits 26 inch wheels, which is what this bike is running. And I had wheels all ready to go. So it kind of needed to be able to fit those. It needed to have decent tire clearance so I could fit some bigger tires. And despite the geometry not being perfect, it was way better than any higher bike or any commuter bike. It's got slightly shorter chain stays, slightly higher bottom bracket, and it's just gonna make my life a lot easier to be able to do all these stunts that I've been asked to do. But the only issue was the frame just didn't look like a city bike, which it needed to do for the video. So it needed modifying. We sent the frame off to Five Land Bikes, which is a Scottish based frame manufacturer who make frames for some big brands like Kotick. And if anyone's gonna do a good job of modifying this frame, it's gonna be those guys. We requested that they remove the top tube and re-weld it lower down. Now the issue with this is seat tubes are often butted with the middle being much thinner wall tubes. Five Land Bikes were confident that it would be strong enough for at least a little bit of filming, but to be a bit safer, they added the brace onto the seat tube. And I'm happy to report that, yep, it totally survived everything I threw at it. After it got welded up, it obviously needed a new paint job. Now, what three words provided the paint code and Five Land Bikes went ahead and gave it its new paint job, including the fork, which I supplied as well. The fork is a DMR Ollie Wilkins steel fork. It's one I just had in the garage anyway, and it's actually perfect for this bike. It's suspension corrected to a degree, steel, nice and strong, absolutely perfect. Now with the frame and fork ready and painted, I had to go and collect it pretty much when the paint was still kind of wet because this was a real tight time frame. And then it was my job to build the bike. The wheels are 26 inch and ones I already had. And if you're really keen eyed, you'd have noticed that these are the ones I had on my Norco Ryan Leach signature bike. Got Hope Trials Hub on the rear with a Mavic 521 rim and a matching Hope hub on the front with light bicycle carbon rim. You may notice the hubs actually clash color-wise with the frame, but that's just because they're all that I had that would fit this bike. Tire-wise, this front wheel already had a Conti Race King tire, and I went and matched that on the rear. Now, I did have to blank out the logos because, yeah, we're not advertising brands in this video, so blanked all those out with a bit of pen and I kept on having to do it throughout the filming process. Moving up the bike a little bit, the stem is something slightly longer than I might usually use because I wanted this bike to be pretty decent at the trials moves. It's never gonna be good, but a longer stem would help. Plus this frame is pretty short, so I definitely need to stretch it out a little bit. Handlebar wise, I'm sure there's no prizes being handed out for guessing what bars I've used on this bike. Yep inspired bars. I've got so many inspired bars that it just makes sense to pop them on this. I'm used to the shape. It raises the front end nicely and makes the bike real comfy to ride. Now, the one thing I did have to buy for this bike is a seat post because I'm going to be riding this bike around the city. I need to have it high enough that I can sit down and pedal. 
So I found the longest post I could that is this size and it's still a little bit too short for a lot of long distance riding, but it worked well enough for filming. The saddle itself is a Madison Kids trail saddle, I think. I got this ages ago for one of my bikes, but I actually can't remember. Some of you guys might know, so remind me down in the comments. One thing I absolutely had to know were gonna work was the brakes. And of course, I had to bolt my favorite brakes to this bike, the Hayes Dominions A4, 180 mil rotors, and they've held up absolutely amazingly. The levers feel awesome and provided no issues for the entire filming process. The cranks are actually some ceramic dub cranks, which I got for a build, which I haven't actually done yet. And I don't know whether I'm actually gonna do it. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this bike. If I keep it built up, I'll keep these cranks on it. But yeah, they're ceram cranks, which I sprayed over the logo because yeah, again, I can't be advertising brands in a commercial. One of the main issues I had building this bike was the gear ratio. It would have been super easy just to stick on, say a 22 tooth inspired combo bash guard and sprocket and just run my usual gear ratio. But it'd be pretty obvious when you see the bike that that's a really small sprocket and not something you'd normally find on a city or higher bike. So I wanted to use a bigger sprocket just to make it look a little more legit. But I also didn't want any derailleur or gears or anything like that that could potentially be bent, cause issues. It would just make life a little bit more difficult to try and get that stuff to work. So I had to find a gear ratio that felt like my trials gear ratio, but still looked big. So with the 32 tooth on the front, I had to find a matching one to go on the back, which ended up being, I think, a 28 tooth. Now you don't actually get single speed sprockets that big. So I ended up taking one out of a cassette. Now this provided a little bit of an issue when I was sprinting up to do the backflip. Because it's just taken from a cassette, it's quite a thin sprocket and actually flexes quite a lot. So when I was sprinting for this backflip, my chain actually came off a few times because I was flexing the sprocket too much. To try and get around this, I actually got a couple of smaller cogs and actually sandwiched my main cog between them and then just used zip ties to try and support it. And you know what? That actually did the trick. It's a complete bodge, but it actually ended up working really well. The other issue with trying to find a gear ratio was that I needed my hub to be in the middle of the dropout, so that's where the disc mount is primed for lining up with a rotor. So not only did I have to find a gear ratio that worked well for my trial stuff, but I also had to find one that worked with a chain length that then let my rear wheel sit in the middle of the dropouts and line up with the disc mount. Fortunately, the 3228 worked perfectly, felt amazing for trial stuff and lined up perfectly for the disc mount. So I couldn't have asked for a better result. Now that left me with pretty much a fully built bike that was totally rideable. And I went out and did some stunts on it to see how it felt. And it felt actually really, really good. I actually really enjoyed riding it, but my work wasn't done yet as it just didn't look like a higher bike. So the next step was to disguise it a little bit, add some accessories, that would make it look like something you'd see in the streets. The first thing I did was try a few different mud guards. And I ended up settling on a fairly traditional looking wraparound style. I did have to modify them slightly so my front wheel didn't hit the very bottom of the front one. And I took a little bit off the back so that if I went off the back of the bike, it didn't scrape on the floor. I did have to do some pretty interesting methods to actually mount this to the bike as well. I had to drill and tap some holes in the frame and generally bodge some things a little bit, but it ended up being bolted on solidly. They haven't moved, they haven't caused any issues. And I am really chuffed with that. I think that worked out really well. They look good, they work well, and yeah, it makes it look a little bit more like a city bike, but not enough. There were still some more things we needed to do. One of the obvious things it needed was a basket so it could actually fit a parcel in the front. Now I ordered a few different baskets. Some were big, some were small, but the main thing I wanted was something that secured to the bike really well and wasn't gonna rattle, fall off, move, or cause me any issues. Now the bigger ones would have worked well to fit this boxing because it's quite a big box, but they just weren't that secure. I can't remember the make and model of this one. I'll link it down below once I find out, but it actually bolts to the handlebars so securely, it was definitely the best of the bunch. The only issue was it was way too small and just physically wouldn't fit the box in. To get around this, I hacked off the sides and added some color coordinated bungee cords that allow me to fit the box pretty securely. Before I figured out this method to fit the box, we were talking about different ways to secure it into a basket, maybe with zip ties or Velcro, but actually with the bungee cords in there, I didn't need to do any of that. It's so secure and works perfectly and looks really cool 
it's small, light, and it's on there so securely. Uh, I didn't have any issues with it and I had full confidence. So that was a good choice. As I'm doing this bike check, the cute thief has appeared. Now I wonder, instead of a parcel in the front, will a cat fit? Well, I might need to get something slightly bigger if we ever plan on going on a bike ride together, but yeah, he seems to quite like it. I just think I need to get him a little crash helmet next. That'd be pretty cute. So with the mud guards and the basket sorted, there was just one more thing we needed to do and that was add some panels like you'd see on a city bike. Now this was gonna be a lot more of a difficult process and I needed help with this. So that's when we got Dave Mack involved. You know Dave, he does all the work with drop and roll. He helps build all the drop and roll rig. He's an amazing fabricator as well as photographer. And he was definitely the guy to get in touch with to do this next step. With Dave's help, we made some mock-ups for the shapes of the panels and got those cut out in a pretty sturdy plastic. What three words came up with the bold design. So Dave cut that out of vinyl, got it stickered up, color coordinated it, and I think it worked out amazingly. I'm particularly chuffed with the main frame ones. That really has changed the bike to look more like a city bike. Making those two tubes look like one, I think has made a huge difference. Now the rear panels, however, I think have made the biggest difference in how this bike looks and also the biggest difference in how the bike rides. These plastic panels aren't heavy, but when you hang them off the back of the bike, it really does make a difference. And a few of the clips we were getting were on a little bit of a windy day and these panels just added basically a sail to my bike and made accuracy pretty hard. But managed to get around that, rode the bike, the panels mostly stayed in place and yeah, I, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do with this bike now. Now I am wanting to sell some of my bikes and these parts are borrowed, so I may have to just strip this back down. Uh, maybe I'll just have the frame as some wall art or something like that, who knows? But yeah, what do you guys think? Pretty different, isn't it? It was good fun to ride, good fun to film, and I'm really pleased with the end result. And like I said, if you haven't seen it yet, it'll be linked down below. If you have any questions that I haven't answered in this video, let me know down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer those for you. And I think we're gonna call it there. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for listening to me babble on about a random bike for however long this video is. Have an amazing week and I'll catch you next time. Take care everyone, bye-bye.